What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to the LAN project here in Football Manager 2019. Today it is episode number 8 if I'm not mistaken and well we've got a bit of a big game for us today. It's the Irish Cup. We're going to be taking on a familiar foe in Ard. You can see of course we beat them in the final of another cup competition 6-2 going to try and do that again today. Since you were last here, we took on Ballymena United, of course, last time out. We have played six games in all competitions, and well, as you might note from the results here, not great, all things considering. We've lost for the first time in the league. The unbeaten dream has died. Anyway, the first game we had was against Windmill Stars. It was the Irish Cup fourth round, non-league opposition. We mopped the floor with them. Jeffy Hughes had a field day, grabbed two goals to his name, and uh, yeah, we ran out 3-0 victors away from home. Following on from that, five league games in a row. And while well, going into the first game, you would have been well, backing us hard, wouldn't you? Belinda Mallard, the team we came up against, a 3-0 win. Stewart with a goal, Michael Henderson with an own goal for them before Kelly grabbed one. Three set pieces, though, that we really made count. It's something that we've been particularly lethal from this season. And I think a big component behind that has actually been Chris Eagles. His delivery has just been top-notch. You know, he really has been great from free kicks, from corners. He's been the man for us, really. And, of course, at 33 years old now, he is starting to decline a little bit um, with us having a few very exciting young centre-attacking mids kind of up and coming. I do feel like his days in the first team are numbered but what he offers us in terms of the ball of quality into the box cannot be underestimated and uh, well you can see just looking at his history here this year six goals and 11 assists in a in 17 league games he contributes so much for us he really has been one of the heroes i feel like of this side so far this year following on from this the first defeat of the year you can see the match stats in the bottom left how have we lost this I don't entirely know. Chris Eagles got us off to a flyer from a direct free kick. A really nice finish by him. However, it was a second half crumble. Uh, they got a goal through, uh, well, it was through Liam O'Neill. And then one of the worst own goals I've seen all year in FM, Shane McLaney. I, I think he's just decided that he doesn't really care which way he just wants all the goals basically i i don't know answers on a postcard as to what he was doing i think he was trying to get it clear uh he didn't clear it though did he unfortunately yes a 2-1 defeat the way that we lost it made it a little bit more perhaps a, a bitter pill to swallow they had two shots two of them went in and uh, well, that is all she wrote for that match, unfortunately. The next two games, two 2-2 two, two draws. The first game was against Ballyclare Comrades. And well, a good little side this side, to be fair. And uh, it didn't get much better for us on the defensive woes. Maybe the match fixing goes beyond the centre-back. Devlin, with an absolute howler for the first goal of the game, just unable to deal with a cross. Fortunately for us, Danny Hill, the young Welshman, got a goal for us. Of course, he is a very, very exciting prospect. He got a lovely finish. Brandon Oddy then doubled our lead. In fact, well, he doubled the zero goal, so he, he didn't double it at all. He, he put us ahead, though, did Brandon Oddy. A lovely goal for him. But then the defensive woes continued. Kebby with an own goal. A little bit unfortunate, this one. A little bit of lack of communication between him and his goalkeeper and well unfortunately for us that was how the game finished just looking at Danny Hill of course getting his first senior goal a big landmark for him really uh, a player who well he was on loan uh, not on loan he was playing for Ballard Town of course previously it's his first senior goal for our team of course you can see here he chipped him with a fair few in Wales we're currently training him to play that deeper midfielder role his mentals definitely lacking but I talked about him last time out the pace that he offers is great for us and he really is a little Jerusel bunny in the midfield he just keeps going and going and going and he's very very quick to get up to speed which is just great to have really anyway the next game against Carrick Rangers our local rivals I think they're certainly a rival of Lan. please correct me if I'm wrong there but a team that we absolutely wanted to be and we didn't um we took the lead twice in this game both times we surrendered the league or rather the lead uh Chris Paul grabbed the first goal of the game his first goal for the club which was great to see Eamon Holden grabbed one for them in the 60th minute Thomas Stewart then got us back ahead and it was suddenly looking, you know, kind of nice. You know, you thought, well, oh, this is going to go to plan, but it didn't. Chris Paul, we had to take off because he was tired. We had to bring in Donnelly, who can only play left wing back and make him play right wing back. And while Eamon Holden grabbed a second goal of the game for him uh, and, well, secured a share of the spoils. You can see actually looking at Eamon Holden here, a player who I have been scouting. Our scouts like him quite a lot. He's not a bad player by any means. He's particularly good with his heading, but... 
I do feel like we have better options out there to maybe dig up. But yes, he got man of the match in this game. Statistically, it was a fairly even game, so I can't have too many complaints. But yes, Carrick Rangers grabbing a share of the spoils there. In our most recent game, we took on a team whose name... I remember someone in the YouTube comments telling me how to say it, and now I can't remember. I think it's Loch Gal, but please correct me if I'm wrong. I, again, I apologise to all my Irish and Northern Irish viewers because... The pronunciations have not been on point. They never will be. Um, you have to live with it, I'm afraid. But yes, in this game, Thomas Stewart got a goal. Shane McLeany grabbed us a second. It was a standard goal for him from a set piece. A very, very nice finish indeed. And well, speaking of Shaney over here, he's not a happy bunny. And he's not a happy bunny because he wants to go to... Drum roll, please. Plymouth Argyle. That was a terrible drum roll, Jack. Never do that again. But yes... Plymouth Argyle in the Skybet League 1 want him. They're rock bottom of the league. They have made a bid of £30,000. I told them in the most polite possible way to do one and that he wasn't for sale. Really, I should say his asking price just stupidly high um, just so that we don't lose him. But, well, Shane here signed a contract extension this year for an additional year. And if we get promoted, he gets another two years added onto his deal. So we are under non, no obligation to sell him. And it has been a bit of a source of contention in the team because... Um, well, he has not been happy about the way he's been treated. You know, he's been disappointed about the fact he isn't allowed to play against Plymouth. But you can see here, one person agrees with him. Who is the one person? Name and shame them, please, game. It doesn't actually tell me. But the bottom line is, uh, 11 people disagree with him. And I've not made him any promise that we're going to sell him. He's not that happy that we're not selling him. I have no reason to sell him. I don't need to. Whilst he is highly influential, uh, other influential figures in the dressing room are very much on my side when it comes to this situation at hand. You can see just looking at our hierarchy, starting to look more like a pyramid than it did a little while ago. I don't think there's any massive surprises with the highly influential players. Maybe Doherty, the 39 or 40 year old goalkeeper at this point, uh, being quite so high up is a bit of a shock. But he is a, a you know, a experienced head, um, and well, the most experienced head in our team. Elsewhere in the team, you can see the rest of the kind of pyramid here. In terms of social groups, the team is starting to gel, which is great. Obviously, I'm hoping that's going to continue to happen throughout this year. We have been signing a number of younger players, of course. Kind of, there's been a constant drip feed of them into the team. As a result, they are all kind of not in a social group right now. Anyway, a little bit of news. We have made one signing in our under-20s. I feel like he's worth talking about because he has a fantastic nickname. I mean, that, that's a good enough reason, isn't it, really, to uh, want to talk about your under-20s. I don't know why it's showing my senior team when I want to look at my under-20s. Have we fixed it? No, I don't know what the game's doing here. Um, in fact, oh, this is, this is our under-20s. It's just I've got all the senior players, of course, down a league. Worth noting, actually, Kaded looks like he might be on his way out of the club on loan. Um, he's been unhappy. He's not been performing that well in training. A few different offers. Crusader's one of the ones that he could go to, but I think he's more likely to return to France. Uh, in terms of the player who I wanted to talk about, Knowing my look, I'm now not going to be able to find him because that's how these things work. I'm looking for Lee King, and he's definitely just sat in front of me on this page. Right, let me just search him. Should have done this to begin with. We, we've given him a nickname of The Plumber because it's Lee King. Lee King. Yeah, maybe we'll call him Mario for short. I don't know. Either way, though, we've signed this guy from Coleraine, and he looks very, very exciting, to be honest. Um, you'll notice he plays as a winger, naturally which of course we don't play with. I am wondering if longer term we may end up playing with wingers, just down to all the players that we have that can play there. However, I am training him to play right wing back, and the reason for doing that is pretty simple. Besides his marking and his positioning, which we can focus on through defensive positioning individual focus, he is pretty well suited to play as a wing back. You know, nine tackling is okay for this level, especially for a 17-year-old. And uh, I think he's got a lot to offer us in that department. So... We are training him away. You can see his finishing composure and off the ball aren't that great going forward. So I actually feel like maybe training him as a wing back isn't the most mental of things to suggest. But anyway, he looks like an exciting player for the future. He's in the under-20s. He may make some appearances during the latter stage of the season if we can wrap up the table sooner rather than later. And while speaking of the table, uh, we are now approaching the point at which the league splits. In fact, we have reached that point. So uh, in a few weeks' time, I guess, the league is going to split and we will play the top six teams, excluding ourselves, so the top five teams, I guess, behind us, uh, two more times. And that will be the league wrapped up after, I think, 30... Three games this season or 32? I guess it's 32 if my maths is correct. 
Is it 30? It is. 30. I don't know why I was doubting my maths. But um, yeah, only 10 games left of the season. We are still 10 points clear, so we look pretty confident to win the league at this point. However, our recent form has been questionable at best, and I'm hoping that today against odds we're going to be able to put it behind us. We have had injuries, and injuries have played a little bit of a role in our team. You can see, looking at the injury history, in December we had nine. I talked about the fact that in November, nine felt like a lot of injuries. The nine in December has definitely added up there. You can see Romario Vieira out with a twisted ankle. Um, he's been out for a little while, to be honest, and unfortunately he's just missed being fit for today's game. The other player who's really been ravaged by injury, not entirely surprising, is Regis Mandanda. I was so excited about this guy when we first signed him a couple of episodes ago now, but he's really failed to get a run in the first team. You can see four appearances to his name. One of those was on off the bench as well. And if we look at his history, whilst he's performed well, the injuries are a tiny bit concerning. Um, obviously, lots of little minor injuries more than anything, but it's meant that we've not really been able to build up any fitness. The games have been coming fairly thick and fast. Today we take on odds, and well, mercifully for us, you can see our schedule has started to loosen up a little bit. Having played seven games in a month in December. We now only have three games scheduled and of course that cup final against Porter Down in the Northern Irish League Cup on the horizon too. So that's another piece of silverware I'd like to win. Right here and now though we need to focus on the Irish Cup. This is a competition where the winner does qualify for Europe. So that is kind of the, the lofty ambition is to do something here. Now, odds are not going to be pushovers. They are eighth in the Premiership. And of course, they are a team who we are familiar with. We beat them not that long ago now, did we? Anyway, let's get into today's game. In terms of team selection, we are allowed seven players on the bench for today's game. Um, the starting 11, to be honest, looks fairly standard. The only change really that might be of note is the fact that Fuad Sul is unable uh, to play today. He's out with the flu, um, so he's at home resting up. And unfortunately for us, his loan ends at the end of this month. I can't renew it. He doesn't want to sign permanently from Barnett, so we are going to unfortunately be losing him. Uh, as a result, it does open up a new opportunity for McGrath to come into the side and show us what he's made of. This guy, we are training him to play as a centre-back. He's actually recently forgotten how to play as a centre midfielder, but it is a role that I do need him to fill in and play for us today, just the way things have panned out. But he's very suitable to this role, so um, that isn't too big of a concern, I guess, for us right now. But yes, it's a little bit sad with Fuad. Uh, of course, I did talk about it, I think, in episode two. I asked you guys, uh, should we be able to sign former players in this save game? And the overwhelming opinion was, yes, we should. Uh, so with this series, um, whilst we will be limiting ourselves, of course, to uh, British and Irish players under the age of 19, and of course, if they're Northern Irish, slightly older, up to the age of 21, uh, we will also be able to sign former players uh, who have played at the club. I feel like over the course of this save, there may be players who outgrow the club who we have to move on. I'd love it if down the line we could sign them again permanently. And given that Lan is quite a community orientated club and quite a family friendly club, it feels like a bit of a family way of approaching things to you know be willing to sign players back and kind of make exceptions to the rules in that department. So anyway, this is the team we're going to go with. Devlin in goal, not entirely surprising there. He's been pretty much our nailed on first choice goalkeeper all year. Uh, the back three, we are going to go with Alex Evans at left centre-back. In fact, we're not. I've changed my mind. Uh, we're going to play Kelly at left centre-back uh, because he's left-footed. And uh, he and Evans are both pretty similar in terms of what they offer us. We're then going to go with Michelini uh, at right back, or right centre back rather. Despite his unhappiness, he is by far and away our best player. He's got four years left on his contract if we get promoted, or three years I guess. But um, we don't intend to sell him, we don't need to. Uh, at right back we are of course going to go with Elliot Kebby. Has had a few struggles with injury. It's kind of been an area of concern right back. But Kebby is back and hopefully he is going to stay fit today. At left back we are going to go with Benny Tilney who has been great so far this year. I mean, look at those average ratings of 7.37 in all competitions. It's probably worth mentioning that across the board at starting 11, you can see how good these average ratings are. They really have been superb. We've talked about McGrath, but alongside him, we are going to go with the, well, the hometown kid. It's going to be Jeff Hughes. Uh, I love this guy. He's been great for us this year. His physicals are slightly starting to fall off a cliff, which is maybe slightly concerning, but he has performed reasonably well for us in the box-to-box -box midfielder role. Ahead of him, we're going to go with Chris Eagles, and up top, it's the standard duo. It's going to be Thomas Stewart alongside David McDade. I love this kind of strike trio with Chris Eagles in behind. It's an experienced trio, a trio who have offered us a lot of goals, and we also have goals on the bench. You can see here we've got Mandanda, of course, Danny Hill, Brandon Oddie, Romario Vieira we're going to have on here, although he's really not that fit. 
Chris Poole, Martin Donnelly and Oisin Lignach uh, are going to be the other players on the bench for us. We'll see how we get on. I'm hoping we won't need to make too many changes. Of course, last time we met Ard, we won 6-2. Our form since then, not been 100%, not been that great, especially in the last kind of most recent games. But we should be capable of beating them today. And I think that's ultimately what we've got to try and strive towards if we can. That's got to be um, the main goal, I think, in this match is to keep this march going. As I said, European football is on offer uh, if we want it, and well, we do want it to put things simply. So, I'm just going to make it so we show their wingers onto their weaker foot. Uh, but besides that, I think that we can, um, well, hopefully get a good result here today. That's got to be the aim. And we are at home, so that's pretty good for us. But hopefully, we can, well, get a good performance here uh, that would see us through to the next round. I'm not sure how many more rounds there are after this. I think the next round might be the quarter final. Or it might be the round before the quarterfinal. Either way, there's a long way to go in the Irish Cup. It's the equivalent of the FA Cup. Pretty much every team in Northern Ireland plays in it. As a result, I mean, it, it's a long road to get to the final. It's not going to be easy to try and qualify for Europe this year. I think it has to be the aim. Um, given the fact that we're looking like we could be on for a treble with the League Cup, the County Antrim Shield and the Division, it'd be nice to make it a quadruple. I don't think that's entirely likely, but... We're going to give it our best shot. And well, it starts today against Ards, where early on, we are dominating the ball and dominating the play. Of course, we're playing at home on our massive pitch. Hopefully, we can use all the space that it offers us to our advantage. David McDade to Tilney. Back to McDade. Lovely build-up player. Stewart, not quite there. Chrissy Eagles. Could go wide. Doesn't need to. Does not need to. Take it back, Jack. Why would he ever go wide when he has a right peg like that? Smashes it into the bottom corner. Beautiful goal for him. That is his eighth of the season. Really nice build-up play in this play too. Uh, headed away and you thought, well, maybe that's to safety. Eagles picks up at the edge of the box, takes it wide and from a near impossible angle, squeezes it into the near post. A lovely, lovely little finish for him. And uh, well, a good little start to the game. There's not been a whole lot of chances and well, there could be another. Ball of quality whipped in by Eagles. Tilney's there, nods it down. Is it going to end up in the back of the net? It has done somehow. Alex Evans is claiming it. Tilney gets another assist for his scrapbook. It's another set-piece goal for us. It's something we really have prided ourselves on. The ball of quality whipped to the back post by Eagles. Tilney nodded it down. A few of our players lunge at it, and well, Alex Evans gets the decisive touch to turn it goalwards. And two goals in three minutes put us in a quite commanding position in this game, and it's been down to that man, Chris Eagles himself. McLeany's now got injured. I'm hoping that's not too serious. Oisin uh, is going to have to come in. We're going to have to rejig our team a little bit here, because... Um, both Oisin and Kelly are left-footed. So as a result, we're going to move Evans to right centre-back. Kelly is going to go to cover and Oisin is going to play that kind of left centre-back position for us. I say I hope that injury isn't too long-term. If he was to be injured throughout the entirety of the transfer window, meaning that he wouldn't pass a physical and a, well, a fitness test at another team, that would be tragic and unfortunate, but it might not be the worst thing in the world as far as we are concerned. Anyway, second half underway here. I am secretly hoping that's not too serious an injury as much as I want to put on a brave face because uh, Michelini, as much as I make a kind of a joke about him and the fact that he might be leaving us and I intend to hold him hostage if I have to, uh, he is a, a player who is important to us. He gets a lot of goals. He is very involved in our set-piece kind of game plan and defensively as our captain. He really does offer us a commanding voice at the back that helps us stay organised. Anyway, Fraser bring the ball forward for them here on this right side. Whips it in. There's options. Alex Evans deals with it, though. Could we hit them on the break? Chrissy Eagles, big wall over the top to David McDade. It's route one. Can it be the finish at the end of it? I mean, McDade has not even hit the target. Not ideal for him there. That was a golden opportunity. Bearing down on goal, breaking away with pace. Unfortunately, he just couldn't quite have the end product. Kebby now with the ball out on the right. Cutting inside. Goes to McGrath. To Eagles, to Stewart. Nice build-up play here. Lovely play. Jeff Hughes' shot is blocked and it's offside. Was that the highlight? That was apparently the highlight. We are on key highlights here, so answers on a postcard as to why that was shown. As well as Eagles has played, I'm actually going to take him off and bring in Mandanda just to try and build up some match fitness with him. Hughes has not had the best game ever on a 6.3. He did just block that shot that we saw. So we'll take him off as well for Danny Hill. Giving a few of our younger players a chance in the team as Eagles thread through McDade, who finishes it this time. It's going to be harsh for me to take off Eagles, but his job here is done. He has uh, well, got a goal for us, 
got a, well an assist now and he was very involved in the second goal for us too but I want to save his legs where I can and well we can afford to do it now 3-0 up against Ards we are in cruise control in this match that is David McDade's 17th of the season not a bad tally for him by any means was it close to being offside let's find out it was not the left back playing him on the run timed to perfection by David and a tidy little finish into the bottom corner should now just see us home. You can see, looking at the stats, we have been dominant in this game. Almost 60% of possession in our favour. Ards yet to have a shot on target. We have grabbed the bull that is this game by its horns. We have taken complete control. Their first shot on target coming in the 72nd minute, and it was comfortably held by Devlin. Pretty good as far as I'm concerned. The game plan has very much been executed here. We go marching on in this competition. Maybe I'm saying this all too soon, but on the break again, we want four. McDade, can he finish it? No, the shot this time blocked and it trickles out for a corner. But genuinely, uh, sometimes I'd be a bit worried even at three goals up to be talking prematurely. The way that this game has been executed by us, I am not concerned as we have another golden opportunity. Mandanda now taking over set-piece duty with Eagles off the pitch and it was a good ball in. I think it was Kelly's shot that was ultimately blocked. And uh, well, we've used all our subs now. Stewart's picked up a tight hamstring injury. He's going to have to play through it for 10 minutes. Ball whipped in. Hill is there. Oh my gosh, hits the crossbar. Not known for his aerial prowess is Danny Hill, the Welshman. But unfortunately, that looping header just didn't have quite enough dip on it. You always feel like when you go three goals up, maybe your team's going to take the foot off the gas. You know, maybe they're going to slow down a little bit. We haven't until this point here as Mitchell breaks through for them. Misses the target, though. I mean, we have continued to play on the front foot here, continued to bear forward. It would have been a real shame to lose the clean sheet there. With four minutes of added time, it looks like we're going to hold on. A 3-0, fairly routine victory, which is great to say and great to see. Today was going to be a test, I felt like, after our recent league form. But, uh, well, we look to be back where we want to be. Kebby has picked up a little bit of an injury, a knee injury. Hopefully that's not anything too serious. Very happy with that performance, though, in the Irish Cup. But you can see uh, Michelini is out for four to five weeks. I think he might miss the Cup final. Kebby's also injured. Thomas Stewart out for only one day with that tight hamstring. In terms of the press conference, I'm going to mash some buttons through it here. I don't often care about the um, press conferences, but uh, I will say now, this this series, I have been trying to make... Um, I have been trying to make more use, I guess, of the press conferences, trying to do them. I've been doing them more in my own time. You can see our media handling is up to 78%. You can see some of our other things here and how they've changed, for those of you wondering. Um, generally speaking, we've been, you know, pretty solid as a manager so far. Our contract still expires at the end of the year, which is a tad bit of a concern. Of course, we are now entering January, um, where the... Well, where the um, Transfer window is open again and also players' contracts start to expire. I have just been, you know, having a little bit of an eye on players with contracts expiring in the not-so-distant future. You know, in the next six months, there are going to be some players available. But at least right now, the players that we've identified, at least the ones, of course, of the age that we can actually sign, they're just not quite good enough, I feel like, for what we want. I mean, if we just look at Doubtful here, you can see there's a few... Um, who I might scout a little bit further, but no one really to scream and shout about. In terms of players we've scouted in general, there's some pretty exciting players here who I've got an eye on. You know, if the opportunity could arise to sign some of these, maybe we'd pull the trigger. It would be interesting to see if we could somehow get into the Europa League next year, how that might impact the kind of players we can attract. I know some people have left really lengthy lists of players that I should be looking at signing. Um, the sad reality is that even though we have a lot of money to spend, I really don't have the ability to attract that many super exciting players to the team. You know, the, 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 we don't have the pick of the bunch, you could say, certainly. We are somewhat limited in our play. We have actually made one signing. You can see some of the other players I was looking at picking up here. Um, but Joe McPherson is going to be joining us. This guy uh, is joining us uh, from, well, you can see here, Formantine United, I guess, in the Scottish non-league. He was released by Aberdeen. Um, he looks like a pretty exciting player. My scouts like the look of him. He's only 18 years old. He can play fullback as well as centre-back. Um, in terms of his nationality, you can see here Peruvian, but with Scottish secondary. And uh, he is 18 until next September, so I was very happy to sign him. And I think on a free transfer, just looking at what we can see about him, it's not going to be a bad free transfer at all. He's not got big wage demands, which has been particularly nice for us. 
You can see, actually, just in terms of the scouting center, we are scouting a lot of players quite extensively. There's some pretty exciting players here who I'd love to sign. I don't think we're going to be able to sign them, though, unfortunately. I mean, this guy would be sick from Aberdeen. I don't know which scout's thrown him up, but I can't see him wanting to join us from Aberdeen, unfortunately. But, you know, it's worth keeping our eye out on players and seeing what might be available down the line. You know, once we get promoted, who knows what kind of calibre player we're going to be able to try and attract here at Larn Football Club. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. In terms of when we'll be back... I don't know if we'll do the Irish Cup sixth round. We'll see what opposition we get drawn against. If it's one of the big dogs, we may well do it. But really, I think the Northern Irish League Cup is the competition to be looking at. We're going to be taking on Porter Down in that. A team who have been on a little bit of a recovery as of late in the Championship. A really impressive run of form, to be fair to them. They are not going to be pushovers, but, well, we are going to give it our best against them. And, well, hopefully I will see you guys for that game. As always, if you have enjoyed today's video, please do drop a like on it. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.